was fortunate enough to be on the team with Jackie Robinson. And you know, he was a hero. He was an American hero. Not just what he did for the black players, but what he did for the game of baseball and what he did for this country. In 1947, Jackie Robinson changed America. Robinson had played for the all-black Kansas City Monarchs. His teammate was the great pitcher, Satchel Paige. Satchel Paige was an unbelievable player, and it wasn't just the fact that he was a player, but his, uh, his charisma and his showmanship. Branch Rickey, the president and general manager of the Brooklyn Dodgers, had actively and secretly scouted the Negro Leagues looking for great talent. Ricky knew that if he picked the wrong player, um, it would be doomed. To, the experiment would be doomed to failure. He chose a UCLA four-letter athlete and former Army lieutenant Jackie Robinson. He got uh, everything from physical abuse to racial epithets from both opposing players and fans, thrown at by pitchers, beamed in the head, spiked on the base paths. Robinson silenced his critics, winning the Rookie of the Year award in '47 and the National League's Most Valuable Player Award in 49. When he put that uniform and those spikes on, he was tough. He wanted to beat you. He was one of the finest competitors I've ever seen in all my years in baseball. The color barrier in baseball was a definite policy. No blacks had played in the majors since the single season appearance of Fleet Walker and his brother Weldy in 1884. It's interesting that while racism and segregation are an obviously negative part of baseball's history, the Negro Leagues are a romantic part of baseball history. The first professional all-black team was the Cuban Giants of Babylon, New York, founded in 1885. Prior to 1920, the best black teams were barnstorming teams, um, and they travel the country playing um, playing all comers. They play other black barnstorming teams. They play um, teams composed entirely of white players. They play amateur teams, semi-pro teams, minor league teams. They were playing ball the only way they could, uh, which would be to travel around and play those people who would play them for money. But in 1920, black ball got organized when Rube Foster of the Chicago American Giants created the Negro National League. As a player manager, Foster developed what became known as the Negro League style. Aggressive base running, hit and run, um, creative use of sacrifice plays, be patient at the plate so you can run pitchers deep into the count, better chance to get a walk, get a man on base, get a guy on base, get him over. Um, so it was in a risky, aggressive style of play. In 1924, the first Negro World Series was held. The Kansas City Monarchs, stars of the Negro National League, defeated the Hilldale Daisies, champions of the rival Eastern Colored League. Members of the victorious Kansas City Monarchs signed this ball. One black historian had said to me, how can people refer to the 20s and 30s, the heyday of Ruth, as the golden era, when maybe one third of the best players uh, around may not have been playing? Not playing white major league ball, that is. The 20s and 30s were also the heyday of black baseball with superstars like Mississippi-born Cool Papa Bell of the St. Louis Stars, known for his speed. Basically, the legend is, is that Cool Papa Bell could shut off a light, and he was so fast he could get into bed before the room went dark. The neat thing about it is it was true. In the 1940s, the Homestead Grays ruled black baseball under the leadership of Cumberland Posey. Cumberland Posey just dedicated his life to the running of the Homestead Grays. The Gray star attraction was their power-hitting tandem, Buck Leonard and Josh Gibson, who was dubbed the Black Babe Ruth. Josh Gibson was a man of unbelievable, prodigious home run talent um, and could just absolutely crush the baseball. Clearly, if he had played in the major leagues and if people had had the chance to see Josh Gibson, uh, he would be known as one of the greatest players who ever played the game. Barely 35 years old, Josh Gibson suffered a stroke and died just a few months before Jackie Robinson entered the major leagues. Larry Doby, uh, just six weeks later uh, than Jackie Robinson, integrated the American League, uh, and that was a great moment for uh, uh, not only Larry, but for, for all of baseball and, and for America. In 1948, Satchel Paige joined Doby on the Cleveland Indians. At age 42, 
Page was the oldest rookie to ever play in the major leagues. Without its greatest stars, the Negro Leagues faded away. By 1959, every major league team had been integrated. It had taken 13 years. During that 13 season period, there were nine most valuable players, you know, nine rookies of the year, four batting champions, five home run champions, and the first Cy Young uh, award winner, all black ball players. Satchel Paige became the first Negro League star to be inducted into the National Baseball Hall of Fame in 1971. He was joined by a host of Negro League pioneers, representing a long tradition of black baseball that began even before the Civil War. The integration years also opened up Major League Baseball to dark-skinned Latinos. From the Dominican Republic, Juan Marichal, pride of the San Francisco Giants, was elected to the Hall of Fame in 1983, and Puerto Rican Orlando Cepeda in 1999. When Orlando was elected, and he and I took a tour of the museum together, and he goes, Negro Leagues, this is where my dad would have played. Those words weren't out of his mouth 30 seconds when he looked up in the corner at a team picture from the Dominican Republic and said, oh my God, there's my dad. It was. Also from Puerto Rico, Hall of Famer Roberto Clemente of the Pittsburgh Pirates recorded hit number 3,000 in his last at-bat of the 1972 season. That same year, while trying to ensure that relief supplies made it through black marketeers to earthquake victims in Nicaragua, Clemente's plane went down. And basically what Roberto said was, they will not steal from me. And he was going to put himself between the the goods and the criminals. So that's the reason he was on that plane. 